I could use somebody who knows a whole lot about generating listings because Tom already said you all have a challenge and the challenge is you need to take more what? I can't hear you. You need to take more what? Well, speak of the devil, the king of listings. Can we clap it up for Mr. Jimmy Mackin, the founder of Listing Leads? Thank you. Thank you. Good to see you, brother. All right. Hey, Jimmy. Yes, sir. As we're grooving to this like 90s beat right now, I'm I liking know, it. I know. I like uh, it. Well, hold on. The first question is everyone wants to know do you still own those necklaces? <laughs> They're like in a framed glass thing. No, no, I don't still own the necklaces. Okay. So was, uh, what do we got today? I want to know from you high level before we bring out some very special guests. Yep. What's working when it comes to generating listings? How should you prime them for what we're about to get into? Yeah. So just, just at a high level, when I look at agents who are trying to transition into going a buyer's agent to a listing agent, or they want to, let's say, ramp up their listing volume, the, the mistake I see everybody make, and, I, and I, I would actually write this down, the mistake I see everybody make is they go after the find out what your home is worth angle. They go after the bottom of the funnel angle, and all they do is push out that same message over and over again. And when I think about marketing as a real estate agent, if you're going to look at listings, there are three things, three things that you can market if you want to get more listings. The first is your value. Of course. Right? Communicating how you're going to help them solve their problems. The second thing is the results that you get for your customers. How quickly do you sell houses? How long are the houses on the market? Or how much money you get above the ask price? And the third thing is your assets, which are going to be the listings themselves. So the value, the results, and the assets. And when you start thinking about how you can market those things, all of a sudden you create a lot more listing opportunities than you ever had before, which is why the three people we're gonna bring out really do an exceptional job at this. And so let's take a, let's take a moment here, Jason. Bring All right, up. can we clap it up for Jill Biggs, Vanessa Riley, yeah. Ashley Blackmore. Can we send these amazing powerhouse listing agents to the stage? Clap it up, clap it up, clap it up. Hey, hey, grab a microphone. Oh, yay. All right. So Jimmy and I are going to attempt to co-moderate a panel. Yes. Okay. I don't know how it's going to go, Jimmy, but we're going to do it together. We can do it, we can do it Jason. We can do it together. First and foremost, uh, please tell all the folks about who you are, where you do business, so they just hear from each of you. Ashley, do you want to start? Sure. I'm in a small town, Durango, Colorado. I'm the owner of Blackmore Group. We have 14 licensed agents, independent brokerage. And um, what else did you want to know? Sorry. What do they want to know is the best Oh, you question. can follow me on Instagram, Colorado Real Estate <laughs> Ashley. That's All where right. you can find my whole life. Awesome. Thank you so much. Vanessa? I'm Vanessa Riley. I'm from Atlanta, Georgia. I have a small boutique brokerage called Domo Realty. Um, Woohoo! Yes! <laughs> there they are. Um, I have four agents. We're very small. I have a, a buyer's agent, a full-time licensed uh, transaction coordinator, and a full-time assistant. And um, I would rather sell a mid-century modern home with a pink bathroom than a new construction white and gray McMansion. So, but I will take your referrals. <laughs> so no, no. so you, you'll take it, but I'll you're focused it. on yeah. the mid-century modern. I love that. Yeah, yeah. Awesome. Jill, you're no stranger to this stage, but tell the folks who you are, where you do business. Um, I'm Jill Biggs, Hoboken, New Jersey. Woo uh, I have been here for a really long time, um, long, and uh, here I, meaning in here Dallas. Here meaning coaching. Well, a lot in Dallas, but here in coaching, long time, and I have 60 agents, give or take, 15 support staff. I'm friendly. <laughs> yes. And that's all it takes. <laughs> yeah. Yes. So Jason, where do you want to start? Let's, we got some examples we want to show, so I thought it'd be helpful for everyone to kind of get a breakdown of what each of these agents are doing to get listed. Yeah, kick us off for that. Well, I think the first one, Ash, is going to be on, um, you use a platform that very few people in the room probably use. I think everybody here likely has an Instagram account, maybe is on YouTube, probably is on Facebook a little bit, but talk a little bit about the platform that you use to get listings that most of these agents here aren't using. So in January, our market was super, just nothing going on. And I had these buyers that were in such a serious situation where they had to 
find a house. They had a relocation for work with the government. Yeah. Um, and I was like, oh my gosh, they got to find a house. So my husband told me, and I have to say this, okay. right? Because I had to say I proved him wrong. He was like, what are you doing? And I go, I'm getting on this app next door and mm -hmm. I'm going to plea my micro story of what was going on with my buyers and see if there's anyone who yeah. may possibly be willing to buy or sell. And at that time, I got on the app next door. And I know everyone's going to say next door is like all the angry people in the neighborhood, <laughs> nothing positive going on. Yeah. But what I found is when I wrote this plea to my yeah. buyer, like, and do and you just, have I think, that? I think we actually have an example we can pull oh. up on the screen as well. Yeah, let's people throw that up on I like screen. examples. Um, so when I wrote this plea out, actually what I found is that there was a bunch more people that were just blowing up my DMs. Now, they didn't like and comment, which mm -hmm. can give us imposter syndrome, but they sent me DMs of like, hey, I've got this house, I've got this house. You seem like you actually care about your job. You're not yeah. just sending us postcards. And so I got a nine listings out of that one post. And, and, and just real quick, what did you say in the post? If we don't have a visual here, what did you say in the post that got such an incredible response? So it was a micro story. It was, I have a client who has a budget up to $950,000. They're looking for a three bedroom, two bath with space for a mother-in-law quarters. Um, they want a spot for an RV. They yep. have 60 days to purchase. And basically that's what I said. And I said, do you have anything out there that may match their criteria? So, so hold on one second before we go to Vanessa. Uh, this technique that Ashley implemented, and I want you all, all to write this down, this is called the magic buyer technique. And you did something really interesting. Most people send it as a letter to their farm, saying, hey, we've got a buyer, this is what they're looking for. But you found another channel where there's homeowners. Uh, did you spend any money on advertising? or is it just Zero dollars. So zero dollars, completely organic. What would the phone conversation sound like when one of these sellers would call you? So you, they saw your post, and yeah. then what would happen next? I said, I'm sure that you've probably been contacted by realtors before claiming that they have a buyer, they get out to your house and they actually don't. Yeah. I want to reassure you that I really do have a buyer. It's Scott and Kale. Yeah. And I just basically tell them exactly what it is. I go to their house. They want me, they invite me over. And if it's not a match, I'm like, well, you know, I really do have a buyer. Mm -hmm. That's the number one thing. Yeah. You really do have a buyer. And I would love the opportunity to list your home in the future and check out my YouTubes and whatever. This, this is such a smart strategy. Before I pass it back to Jason here. Welcome back, Jason. Um, <laughs> I was getting the slides. <laughs> oh, oh, here? Okay, you guys can all see this now? I got the slides up. Okay. Yeah. What, what's so smart about this is that a qualified buyer is an asset. Many of us have buyers who are looking to make a move, who, it's so good. right, they're, they have a, they're looking to make a move, they've been searching for a while, and we're waiting to see if a home hits the market. Really good listing agents create the market. Love yep. that, Ashley. What a tie-in, by the way, with the way you set this up, where the assets you have are that final piece of what you talked oh. about. That's super good, I love yeah. that. Last thing real quick, uh, one in three households in the US are on next door. I mean, it's a massive platform. 79% of consumers say that they made a purchase decision because of a recommendation on Nextdoor. I have a, so I might have missed it because I walked away and I just kind of ghosted this table. I apologize. Welcome Did back. you talk about how what you're doing on next door is driving conversations into your DMs? Yeah, yeah we did. Okay, yeah, we did. We covered that. And I think the biggest takeaway is that we always want all these likes. We always want all these shares. We sure. always want all these views. Now, when Jason and I were talking about this I, yesterday, I put together my insights. And the interesting thing is not a lot of com comments are likes or hearts or whatever you do on Nextdoor, but the analytics are like 3,000 people That's saw okay. that post. That's That's so okay. I think get out of that kind of, oh my gosh, I'm not getting that activity directly. Yeah. What's going on in your DMs matter. Okay, so just by a show of hands here, who here is actively marketing their business on Nextdoor? Look around the room, folks. I think it's just, I, because we're allowed to do this, it's a podcast. It is a podcast. I, I'm interested, right? I never would have thought to do that on Nextdoor because I would have been afraid of the haters. Because, like, Bring I look on. on Nextdoor and it's always somebody I do not believe with an animal that wants me to save them. You don't seem no. like you're the type who gets afraid of haters. Yeah, I, like, but I, like, I didn't ever think of using it. I actually think it's brilliant. Yeah. And, Thank you, and, Jill. And very interesting. 
Yeah, my coach Merrill calls me the politically correct Beth Dutton, so I can take some haters. <laughs> right. All right, Jason, what do we got next? All right, let's 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 switch here to Jill. So Jill, you have a strategy, and if you want to go ahead and hit the slide, called the listing multiplier, and when you say so, we can play your, you have a video, and I want you to explain the listing multiplier strategy. Are you going to play it first? Or you? you? I said when you want to play, you play it. Let's so roll. I had a really long video, and you uh, this is short, so they've cut it. So when I look like a crackhead, I, I actually <laughs> look like a crackhead, but whatever. This is uh, how to take one listing and turn it into four. And actually, Jason asked me a question before they play it, because he wanted to know what... What, do we, what is really the production from this listing multiplier? So, of our business, from the flywheel, 71 of our deals, uh, year to date, closed and active, came from using this, uh, which is 56 million in volume, right? 1.4 million in GCI, and it's 21% of our total production. So the shit works. Yeah. Mic drop. Go ahead, play it. All right. Play the video, guys. People often ask how I get so many listings in the same building. Let me tell you how one sale led to four more listings for our team. With a little decluttering, some paint and staging, the place went from ordinary to I would buy. We launched the pre-listing campaign, shared listing with the team, texted and emailed job, the preview right? to appropriate buyers in our database, mailed personal handwritten invites to the entire offering area. early access to the open house. We posted a coming soon reel, even so circled the surrounding neighborhood at 70 people through the first open house. The result, a massive bidding war. It didn't stop there. So we called the neighbors. Interested in what your neighbors are under contract for? buyers lost and are still vigorously looking. If you're considering selling, it might be the time. And from this, we got another listing. First listing closes. We get a five-star review that's shared everywhere. A happy seller writes a letter to the neighbors about their wonderful experience. We provide the envelope and stamp. Another round of circle dialing. The second listing enters pre-launch and rinse and repeat. This is the power of our flywheel. Okay. So, so uh, I, I think that was being played on two, oh. not one speed. <laughs> that was definitely sped up more than you talked about. But what's, tell what's, us about the strategy. Okay. I don't know if it can end in actually the flywheel, but whatever. So we've broken it down, right, in how to take this one listing and by, you know, circle dialing and loading the numbers. We have VAs, put that into FUB for our agents. You call the building, you invite them, we're sending those personal handwritten notes. And then we have a massive bidding war because we do a mega open house, and I do sound like I'm on crack. And then the interesting pieces of that, and it works whether you're in a building like we are, or you could do it for farming, we actually, not only do we invite the neighbors before, but once we close, we get the seller to write a neighbor letter, right? So they write a neighbor letter saying how great we were, and everybody reads that. Also, they have buildings, at least, and I, I, I'm sure communities have internal boards where you can't access it, but they can. So you have them posted on there as well to get traffic. And from it, right, when you have a 71 person open house and then you have a bidding war and you call the whole building and you say, you wanna know what the neighbor sold for, right? You get another listing and you take that listing and you do the ha same thing and there's a ton of touch points and it just keeps going and it's honestly, it's how you dominate in a neighborhood or a community or a farm. Well, what, what's really smart about this, in psychology they call it the mere exposure effect, yep. which is the fact that the more people see you, the more that they trust you, the more likely they're gonna be hiring you. So by having multiple touch points, mm -hmm. through phone, through calls, through door knocking, through mail, whatever it is, you start to build that trust with the consumer. But there's one thing that, before we move to Vanessa, as we wrap here, Jason, yep. one thing that Jill just said that everybody should have written down is they have their neighbors write a letter and send it to their other neighbors. And it, we give them the envelopes. Shit, we get our kids working and have other people work. You know, we all have kids. Get them, they can write. They have nice handwriting, hopefully. Yeah. It's, it's, a, it's a brilliant strategy. It's a the idea of, the, like, the next time you do a Just Sold, can you get your happy seller to send a, hey, just want to let you know as I'm moving out of the neighborhood, we had, a, we had a great agent. All right, that's amazing. Okay, Vanessa. Yes. You are one of the best writers I've ever encountered, wow. and I want you to talk about your letter strategy and how it helps you generate listings in Atlanta. 
And you guys can pull up the next slide for us so we can see it. Well, so before you, so I do have your letters that you sent me up on the screen, mm -hmm. and we can click them to make the text bigger so we can read along because we're reading a letter. Please. Okay. So yeah, so I would rather write 10 million letters and get on two cold calls a day. I prefer to write. I feel like I'm a better communicator in my writing. Um, this year, I've doubled down on letters. And what I do is I'm sending out um, about 70 to 100 letters per sold listing in uh, a little geographic area around the listings I just sold, hand addressed, hand stamped. Uh, somebody else talked about this, but there's more of a commitment on the um, homeowners, and when they get that letter and they open it up, you know, they can just toss a postcard away, but with a letter you have to open it up, and of course they're going to read the first couple lines. And um, so I always start with a hook. I want to pique their interest, um, keep them reading. Uh, the key point, I mean, there's no way to... There's Sorry. No, okay. There's no way to mess this up, but I think what I focus on in these letters is I make them as relatable yep. as possible. I make the seller, I make the client my hero. Like, I'm not talking about myself. Yes, so I, you're not going to see a just sold 101% right. above ask price, <laughs> find out how much your home is worth, scan this QR code. Exactly, yeah. The, it's all about the client. It's all about their journey. Um, it's all about what they wanted to accomplish. Then, mm -hmm. of course, I'm going to talk about the price. Uh, but it's not, look what this house sold for. It's more, I, I want to give them a comparison, like this house sold for 100000 more than this estimate, or this house sold for 100000 more than the uh, seller's dream price. That's yeah. a good one. Or, Describe the phone calls you get. So when, because you've been, you only do things at work, you've been doing consistently. When a seller picks up the phone and they call you, what does that conversation sound like? Uh, I'd say 95% of my sellers, my listings are come list me phone calls. Uh, that? Yeah. 95%. Um, yeah. These letters are worth reading. If you, we've got it blown up on the text, and of course, everybody who's watching, whether live stream or here in the room, all the slides are made available to you, and Vanessa has been so kind to share two of her letters. I wonder, do you want to do you want to look at any specific language in the letters? Well, we're we're wrapping now, but what I will say, and I think this is a theme mm -hmm. as we wrap here. The theme is every buyer can become a listing, and every listing can become another listing. Mm. So as Ashley walked through, as Vanessa walked through, as Jill walked through, you see they're leveraging their buyers to create listings and they're leveraging their listings to create more listings. They're not just putting in the MLS, selling it, and then starting back over again. And that's exactly what every seller wants to see so that they're watching from the sidelines when they're considering making a move, when they're yeah. looking for that agent. And I'll wrap with this and I'll say grateful, we're so grateful for everybody's contributions. It is far more common for a seller to reach out when they found the agent they want to hire. And it is, like you said, such a missed opportunity that you aren't leveraging the listings you've got yeah. so that those sellers who are looking for that next agent that they want to talk to, if they don't get to see you working, you're completely missing your opportunity to make a mark and an impression with them. Yeah. Can we clap it up so loud, so proud, so grateful for these three amazing, extraordinary agents? Good job, Jack. Yeah, clap it up. Look, look, watch me steal your letter, right? Tom Ferry, where are you at?